he was in it. I might start to cry. <laughs> Hey friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda Muse, and today I have a question for you. So raise your hand if you've ever wanted to learn more about where you come from. I've teamed up with Ancestry, who is sponsoring today's video, and they are going to dive deep into my history, my family tree, and share things with me. Actually, I don't know what they're gonna share yet because we have to do the video, but they're gonna, I think it's gonna be surprising. And I'm really curious to learn more about some of the women in my life in honor of International Women's Day. You know, a lot of people can probably pull off the top of their head an inspirational woman that they look up to, a part of history that did magnificent things, and you feel this connection to them. But what about some of the real people in our own lives? Maybe what they did seems small in comparison to these like historical figures, but they have impact, lasting impact. And I'm really curious to see how some of the findings tie into, you know, how I see my story and my place in the world. And something to consider as you're watching this video is that you as well can start digging into your family history quite easily. You're gonna see, it's kind of amazing, using Ancestry. And there's gonna be some links below for you to check out. So first watch the video, then start. Because once you start, it snowballs. It's really hard to stop because you can go back and back and and back. Let's start with the grandmother on my mother's side. So what I know is that my mom was born in Canada, but her parents were actually born in Cardiff, Wales. And my grandma met my grandpa and they fell in love. Although I think that they were both from different uh, families. So one was a little, like my grandmother was well off in comparison to my grandfather. I feel a connection to her because of her journey into motherhood. So here she was, you know, uh, an expat, if you will, in Canada. She didn't have friends. She didn't have family here. I myself had my children in a foreign place. I lived in Malaysia. I embarked on my motherhood journey um, starting from a rather lonely place. I didn't have friends, I didn't have family there, um, but I made it work and it was one of the best adventures of my life. I feel that connection with her. Um, on my dad's side of the family, my grandmother was an artist. I don't know that she would call herself an artist, but she was, honest to goodness. If she was around today, my age, she would be the best DIY blogger that existed. Her house was perfection. But what was a challenge is that the time that she was born and the era that she was born in, it wasn't the easiest time to pursue a career outside of raising children. And I, I know a story that I just like is in my mind that she would paint in the day. And then when it was time for like my aunt and my dad to come home from school, she would just slip the painting underneath the sofa um, and then continue painting later. And that's kind of what I know. So obviously there are a lot of gaps to fill. I mean, there's entire generations I don't know anything about and I'm super curious to learn more. So let's begin. You always start with what you know, uh, starting with yourself and your parents, your grandparents, anything else. Talk to those living members of your family, get that information and get it online. And if you don't always know the exact information, that's okay. Just start with what you know. And then they have these little green leaves that kind of pop up and those are called hints. Oh. And what that does is it kind of says, we think that this record might be related to your person. So it gives you a hint to go check that record and see if that information is indeed your person. You talked a lot um, with us beforehand about your maternal grandmother. Yes. That she left uh, Wales. She did. And came to Canada. You mentioned that they came from, your grandparents came from differing families. They did. So let's look at Thomas, uh, Thomas Leslie Reese. That's okay. your grandfather. Let's click on Albert Reese. You said Albert. And we're going to just look at the information you gave. And he was born about 1899 in Cardiff, Wales. Okay. There are some hints there. So okay. let's go visit those. What? This one is a 1939 England and Wales register. So the most recent census for the UK is 1911. Okay. But we have a 19 1939 Wales Register and so that is kind of a substitute right now before we get the 1921 census from England so let's go ahead and click into the image oh, which interesting. is really fascinating can you see what his uh, occupation is a, what's a dredger I heard he was a longshoreman longshoreman so this is a dredger is working on the docks Yes, mm -hmm. this is what I mean. That's a rough place to be. Yes, so that's probably where the poor, yes. not 
wed- not educated, not wealthy is exactly. coming from. Click save to your tree. Okay. And that will automatically get saved right to your tree. Oh, so, so step neat. one. <laughs> Let's go and see what Margaret's family may have been doing. Okay. So click on this little pedigree button right there and that takes you back okay. to your tree. Okay. Great. So now let's go to Archibald. That's Margaret's father. Archibald. That just I sounds he... more posh, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> okay. Okay, now go to his hints oh, as yes. well. We're going to see what he has. And let's find that same registry, that 1939 okay. England and Wales register. His he was a commercial traveler? Commercial traveler. So what he was he was a merchant, so he would go and oh. sell all over the world. So he was like a salesman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So you have one person who's at the docks. Right. And the other who's traveling all over the world selling. So Something. very different. Very Inter- different. And oh, what does that say? T? That's interesting. It's hard to, it's, it's, it's very like handwritten. Yes. Very apparent that these two people lived from, like you said, one had oranges on the bed at Christmas. Yeah. Perhaps Thomas did not. Oh, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. We're going to go to Margaret now. Let's click on Margaret. Okay. Go to her profile. All right. Have you seen this one? Okay, no, not this Look one. On this one. But I've seen a version of her okay. in, in uniform. So she's in uniform. Right. Any ideas about that? No, all I know is the hair thing. Okay. That's it. So something about uniform right. is there. So she served in World War II. She did. She's in uniform. Right. So let's find out about that. So okay. what? So let's add that photo, save that. And what that will do is it will save it right to your tree. And so someone has shared that online and it's added now to your profile. See that? Oh, amazing. Great. So something I, I'm like, I want to find out more about her military service. And I came across a newspaper announcement of her marriage. Oh. And so I have a <gasps> copy of that. This is in the Western Mail. March 18th, 1946. So, marriages, Reese Howell, on Saturday, March 16th at St. Mary's Church, White Church. Okay, so I don't, what is this, female? So F Sar- sergeant means flight sergeant. He was in it. I might start to cry. <laughs> <laughs> to Margaret Joan Howell. So what's ATS? ATS is Auxiliary Territorial Service. She was in the military. Oh my God. If you are not a nurse. Right. That is where the women in the military served. Damn, look at that. You know, I think you have two people in two different social circles. One could suspect maybe the military is what brought them together. Absolutely. I knew it was the military. I just didn't know like in what capacity. Yeah. I also didn't know if my grandfather was telling the truth because he was such a larger than life character. Absolutely. Like, well, you know, you have to have a certain kind of like, attitude to be able to fly an airplane into war and fighting and i mean there just has to be some kind it's kind of like a surgeon right and we all and we all know that i married a pilot right well there you go what the heck (laughs) let's go look at elizabeth hackett i want to look at the women we're focusing on the women right for international women's day and let's click search for her as well Let's see okay, so find. even if you see nothing here, right? You're so like nothing. You could do a global search because we do have her relationship to Daniel to help guide us. Here she is, Mrs. Elizabeth Sullivan. And what's this? <gasps> wow, she was a school teacher. School teacher. Did you know that? No, but I tell you, on that side of the family, there's a lot. My grandfather was a professor, a university professor. Wow. Right. So that was. So she was a school teacher, and this is in Kent County, New Brunswick, and. She was born in about 1857. Wow. So in her 20s, so in the 1870s, she was a school teacher. Education in that area became very important and mandated about eight, in the 1870s. It started becoming so. So she was right at the cusp of all of that educational movement. Wow. Into that area. Almost like a pioneer. Yeah. So interesting just to have that one little nugget. Just boop, you yeah. know, like and this and she that, that probably indicates she came from a wealthier Irish family, not like a destitute famine, you know, coming to the Canada from the famine. But their family came a little bit earlier than the famine, and probably met, they had a little more money. They were more educated, and she wanted to share that education with the people of her community. Absolutely. So, oh, that's really what a mover and a shaker. I yeah. <laughs> so now you were talking about uh, the Leclerc family or the yes. Leclerc family. So. Tell me about that. What do you know about them? So, okay, what do I know? I know that Alfred, I think he did something. He worked, um, so for the men that would go into the forest and cut down trees, mm-hmm. he was the chef. Oh. That's what I understood. French chef. Yeah. Wow. New Brunswick. Okay. And then something like, something happened. He lost a leg. I could be 
okay. you know, this is this is my brain's not really sure. He lost okay. a leg somehow. Um, I know that Alfred and Rose had a ton of children <laughs> because okay. and it's, a bit, it's a bit of a funny joke. It was like basically he would go okay. and then they would go and he would be away. And then every time he came home, they had a baby. So, um, <laughs> and Rose was just exquisite. Like she had her hair always up and she just looked fabulous. And my grandmother would tell me like she could do anything. Like she just took the time to make the beautiful curtains in the house and the dresses for all the girls. And, um, it's so a very skilled. Very skilled, very, yeah, I mean, and if you think about it, her husband was away, yeah. so she did it for herself and for all of her children. So we said his name was Alfred. Ah! And so this is showing... Fred, is it? Joseph Fred, so I'm thinking it's Joseph Alfred, and he probably went by Fred. So he's 24. Okay, and this is a marriage. Correct. Life. Okay, so marriage. He was about, oh, a soldier. Yes. Her name's a Rose Gagnon. Yes. Oh, she was 17. Young thing. That's young. <laughs> so she was born in the States, as it were, but right. then went back up to Canada. The family was from Canada. Oh. Here's the wonderful thing about French Canadian ancestry. Mm -hmm. I have French Canadian ancestry as well. Okay. So, yay, cousins. Yeah. <laughs> because likely we are cousins. Oh my God. Because yeah. French Canada, there was a group of people that came over and established New France, and, and then they had children, and then those children married those You know, so there's mm -hmm. lots of different connections you can make with people who are from French Canada. This is the tree we've researched for you. Okay. And then let's click on uh, the Noel line. You have a line with uh, the last name Christmas. Mm, Noel. Noel. I love that name. <laughs> Ignace. Ignace Noel. Noel. And then who is his mother? So Nicole Legrand. Nicole Legrand. Okay. Okay. When, you're, when was she born? She, 1648. Wow. Long time ago. That's a long time ago. So have you ever heard of the Fille du Roi? Yes. Hold on. Fils du roi. Fils du so roi. that's daughters of the king. Oh my God. Hold on. Okay. So tell me more. <laughs> like, wait. Well, tell me what you know. What do you I know? I don't. I, this is. I should know more. Okay. Let's see if let's see if I'm right. So daughters of the king. Were these the women that were sent to Canada uh -huh. to like establish people, like to yes. have babies? Yes. Like, they they were women that were called Daughters of the King because they were given a dowry by the King of France. And we had, uh, over in New France, there were trappers, there were, you know, uh, farmers, soldiers, there's all men. And they wanted to establish this colony, right. French colony, and you need women to help have make families. families. Yeah. Uh, and so what they were, were they were women who were orphaned or who came from circumstances that were not as desirable. Maybe they didn't have opportunity or matches that could be made. And they would actually choose the men they married. They weren't assigned. It wasn't a male order bride. It was kind of like, here, let's see what happens. Yeah, like, like come find... on over and, and you're going to... And when they married, well, first when they came over, they were given money. They were given, uh, you know, a, a living of sorts. And then when they married, they were given a certain dowry that would come with them to okay. the marriage. It's like two cows and 50 livres of money and two pigs or something. And they would bring it into the marriage. So it was a desirable thing for the man to marry this this woman right well your this is your eight times great grandmother Nicole Le Grand and she was a fille du roi. There's an actual society that you can join at, in Canada that is at, like members of fille du roi that have this ancestry that you oh can, gosh. yeah, there's all these different kinds of historical societies, different things, and there is one very, very specifically for this. <gasps> I tell my friends in the States that having um, ancestry uh, that goes to a fille du roi is like having a Mayflower ancestor in the States because the Mayflower is very noted for, they're one of the first that came over when the fille du roi were quite literally the first. The first? Yes. This is incredible. Oh, you do know that like after you go, Lisa, I'm about to do a lot of research <laughs> I'm on excited. filles du roi. Like my brain is like... Poof. Okay, so the biggest one, les filles du roi, they are the maternal ancestors of thousands of North Americans because they come from the French-speaking regions and institutions of France. I suppose the reason I got so emotional at that part is that it like instantly connected me to them. It's just, it gives me chills. It really gives me chills to feel like I'm part of a bigger picture. A big thanks to Ancestry for teaming up with me today and sponsoring this video. I am feeling so like empowered and inspired by my own story. I mean, they have more than 10 million family trees and access to 13 billion ancestor profiles. Are you kidding me? Like your family's in there 
trust. <laughs> Now, of course, a reminder that you can have access to Ancestry yourself to do your own digging, your own family history, your own family tree for 14 days. The links are below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.